before we get started on this topic, I just want to say that I'm not a professional breeder. Uh, Justin Kabilka actually has some really good videos on breeding that he put out many years ago, and they're really good. Don't stop watching this video, though, because I'm going to talk about a question that was asked that I've never heard anybody else cover this exactly in this way either. So I'm hoping to give you guys some really good information that you maybe haven't heard yet before in this video when it comes to when you should breed ball pythons. Oh! Ah! My family is out of town, as I mentioned. So I'm borrowing the living legless family. You guys know Travis. Look at the shirt Riley's got on. Can we see that? You're covering up the most important part. Oh, oh. I'm attached. Stop it. There it is. Yep. I didn't I didn't tell her that. They, they called me up and Travis was like, go put on a shirt, we're going to hurt. And she puts on that shirt. What'd you say to her? I said, you put on the wrong shirt. And she said, I like this shirt better. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up, man. I got a snake. But yeah, we're going to go herping with my buddy Travis there in a little bit. But first, I wanted to talk to you guys about when you should breed ball pythons. This came about because of a question that was asked of me on Instagram. And I figured, hey, I got my sunset snake here. Not a sunset snake, but his name is Sunset and he's an indigo snake. And he's awesome. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to talk about uh, the hognose snake that we got in the last video. If you didn't watch that, I did ask if you guys would throw out some name suggestions. And the most common name that came back, hands down, was Miss Piggy. Now, I'm worried that Miss Piggy is maybe a little too common. In fact, when we were there at Matt's house, his buddy came over and he recommended Miss Piggy. So everybody recommended Miss Piggy. Uh, I wanted to have a different name, maybe. And there was one other suggestion down there I saw, Hogzilla. Now, I don't want to discount all the Miss Piggies out there, but... I'm gonna put it to a vote with the kids. When the family gets back in town, I'm gonna let them each vote, and there's three of them, so it won't be even on Miss Piggy versus Hogzilla, and we'll get a, get that name going for her. And while I'm talking about this subject, I'm gonna bring out several snakes for you guys to check out, some eye candy to gander upon while I uh, talk about them. Specifically, snakes that have bred and produced clutches for me this season successfully. I figured it makes sense to show those snakes, right? Of course. Here's our beautiful boy, Bullwinkle, that uh, produced a clutch for us this season. Super pastel lesser, Mr. Bullwinkle is pretty cool. Here's the question that I was asked by Mr. Robert Highslip. He said, I was just watching a video and it hit me that for all the months and years that I've been researching reptiles and what I need to know so that I can become at least a hobby level breeder, I've never heard someone explain why you can only breed snakes certain times of year and why these fully domesticated animals still have seasonal breeding habits. Habits. <laughs> and what is the season? When is it best to pair my snakes? Of all the creators I watch on the regular, I've never had someone actually really explain that. Maybe you could. All right, Robert, here we go. And here's Bernice, our super fire produced the clutch with Bullwinkle. And the day I posted that video, that whole clutch sold that day. So thank you guys for just being so on it like that. That, that was cool. Um, so your, your question brought up a couple other questions that I wanted to answer because people wonder, can you tame a snake? Is that true? Like domesticated, what does domesticated mean? It, I, these are the things I ask myself, like what does domesticated really mean? People, are these snakes domesticated? Is that right? So if you look up the definition for domesticated, it says tame and kept as a pet or on a farm. There's another definition for domesticated that was on there too. I thought was pretty funny. It said, especially if a man fond of home life and housework. <laughs> I'm domesticated, kind of. It took me further down a rabbit hole a little bit and the fact that tame was part of the definition for domesticated, so I looked up what does tame mean? Not dangerous or frightened of people, semicolon, domesticated. It's like, <laughs> great. So tame means domesticated, domesticated means tame. What's the difference between tame and domesticated? I promise we're getting into the breeding stuff in just a second, but I just wanted to cover this because it is a question a lot of people ask and some people say you can't tame a snake and are they even domesticated? That people say they're still wild animals. I think that the definitions here of the words themselves prove that wrong because this animal is definitely no longer afraid of people. So here's, here's what they say. Taming is the conditioned behavioral modification of a wild-born animal when its natural avoidance of humans is reduced and it accepts the presence of humans. But domestication is the permanent genetic modification of bred lineage that leads to an inherited predisposition toward humans. So basically the difference is an animal could come from the wild and be tamed, and then if you actually breed that tameness into the animals, then that's what domesticated is. And this species in particular, coming from West Africa, Southern West Africa to be specific, the countries of Benin, Togo, and Ghana are where ball pythons are mostly found, 
in those areas, these animals were worn as living jewelry by the royalty out there, which is, of course, where they get their name Royal Python, Python Regius. So it could be argued that these guys were domesticated and royalty was wearing them. They were already acclimated to humans even before we started breeding them here in the United States in, in the numbers that we do now. So it could definitely be argued that these are have been domesticated for a long time. And ball pythons are certainly known to be quite tame. And here's Maya, our coral glow that laid a clutch for us just recently. The clutch is still in the incubator waiting for it to hatch. Okay, so seasons. Is there a breeding season? In Africa, there certainly is. In the wild, there, there is. And it's because of the wet season in Africa. There, the southern areas of West Africa have two rainy seasons and one lasting from the end of uh, April to mid-July. And then there's another one that goes from September to October. So why are these rainy seasons important when it comes to breeding? Well, the rainy season is usually what brings out lots of animals and life becomes very abundant. Of course, water, the, the thing that gives all life the chance to live, that water, there's no life. So everything comes out of the bush. I imagine I haven't been to Africa myself, but I imagine the rainy season and from documentaries I've watched, it just really brings out the life. So that's a good time for animals to be able to eat. It's a good time for them to thrive. These snakes will have food because all the life is thriving out there. And obviously you need to have food to, in order to reproduce. They need energy to reproduce and having food is a big key for that. So the rainy season is crucial to when these guys are, are triggered to start breeding. And here's Cindy, our Enchi Firefly clown girl that produced a clutch for us this season. Beautiful, beautiful clutch. Are these seasons important in captivity? That's a good question. Because you can control most aspects of the climate in your snake room. You can control the temperatures, you can control the humidity. You can even like spray down your enclosure to maybe mimic some rain. But the one thing that you can't control, sorry, Sandy. The one thing that you can't control in your snake room is barometric pressure. And barometric pressure is basically like the weight of air in the atmosphere coming down and, and creating pressure. Uh, why that pressure is important is because changes in atmospheric pressure can often, but not always, can predict the weather in coming days. Falling pressure suggests that a low pressure zone is coming through, which usually means wet and stormy weather coming your way. Whereas high pressure is the opposite. You know, you're looking for clear, dry, fairly sunny weather. So even though these guys are tame and domesticated, that, that it's hard to they still have those instincts, you know. This, uh, I feel that that barometric pressure is a huge trigger for these guys to know that, hey, it's it's a rainy season, it's coming. So it's definitely in your interest to check your weather forecast if you're planning to breed snakes and, and see if you got low pressure systems coming through. And that would be a good time to pair your snakes up because it's gonna have that trigger, that barometric pressure trigger that lets them know, hey, rain is coming. Maybe it's time to either just start eating or just be ready to breed and maybe that that's part of what triggers follicle growth i don't know that stuff for sure but it would only make sense that if the rainy season is the breeding season for these animals in the wild that that rain and low pressure system moving through is a big trigger for them breeding now this isn't some big secret a lot of people know about this but this is just me trying to answer that question as to why now here's candace our girl uh that she was the last one to lay a clutch and she actually hasn't gone back on food yet but man look at her she's still super healthy big old thick thick snake so the rainy season is certainly a good time to think about breeding snakes and uh, that's gonna change depending on where you're at you know um, it really depends you might have here in California we we hurt for rainy season so anytime even looks like it's gonna rain I come down here and start pairing snakes together <laughs> like, oh my, I don't know how much rain we're gonna get those of you that live in areas where you get regular rainy seasons like consistently probably have some really su good success breeding ball pythons and it's a good idea to research if you're breeding any species of snake research into their natural environment and learn all the different patterns that happen out there if you're looking to breed some species that haven't been bred before maybe research into their native habitat is going to help you out immensely yeah i hope that answered your question robert and i hope everybody else you were able to get lots of good information from his question and me answering it to the best of my ability i say we go herping but first I just, want, I just want to reflect on this table. I've really been loving this table, man. I'm I'm super happy with how it turned out. And plus, you guys can't tell what's going on down below here. Now, you don't know if I'm wearing clothes or not. I got a shirt on, yeah, but you don't know what else is happening down there. All right, let's go. He's a good friend. He's a lot of old man money. It's not, not super fresh. It, it broke on me right as I... I touched it, but... Good sign, though. Here's another part. Here's the head. 
Looks see, like you can see king, the king snake. You think, huh? Yeah, probably king snake. See, king snake? here's the eye caps. See the eye caps and the the. Yeah, that's definitely a California king. You can see that black bold and then the white, like the white nose. And so, if we look at these these sheds here, yeah, see. So on the sheds here, you can see the black and white banding. So definitely California King. California King. Maybe sheds are always longer than, than the snake, so I think it's probably you figure, a yearling. Yeah, probably a yearling, maybe. Whoa. Give or take. Yeah, I'd say I'd say a yearling. Yeah. For sure. But right here in the Well, to be honest, when I came down this little part of the trail, that's why I was hoping we'd find a king snake, so that's a good sign. Aww. The real tough thing about herping like this is making video at least you, you don't know if you're gonna find anything or not and it's like you get this whole video going and if you don't find anything it's like what kind of video was that here king snake here king snake king snake king snake here king snake king snake king snake king snake here king snake king snake king snake king snake king snake here little king snake here little snakey oh yeah they don't have ears so we're out here oh on our way up over here we passed there must be some kind of really badass car show going on in town because we passed all kinds of amazing vehicles, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, it's incredible. We're hoping to find some snakes here. The, the temperature is getting pretty nice. It's been a warm day, but we might spot something in this tall grass. Hopefully, hoping for a snakey. <laughs> made it to a golf course. I've never actually made it to this part. We haven't found any snakes, but I'm not giving up yet. Are you giving up, Riley? We have way more to go. I actually went golfing with my father-in-law and brother-in-law the other day and uh, got par in a couple holes and I don't really play golf. I played maybe once in the last three years. Flag, you can do it if you really want. Even if we don't find anything, it's still a great time. I'm just gonna keep talking about not finding something. We're not gonna even find anything. I should stop talking about that. It's a beautiful time of day to be out here. Look at this, gorgeous time. <laughs> Now that was a find. Is that I, a giraffe? That That's is a giraffe. That is actually that is not just any giraffe, my friend. That is Sophie the giraffe. Sophie the giraffe? Sophie the giraffe. That's Sophie. That's a chew toy for babies. I named one of my snakes after this. Does this count? I, I literally one, I've got an Enchi uh, What is it? I've got a stingless bee. It's an Enchi lesser spider named Sophie. It's named after this giraffe right here. I feel like that counts. <laughs> to the top haven't found a snake so my only chance from here just go back down that was a great horned owl flying off there pretty sweet well don't always catch snakes when you're out there you don't always find them in the wild but the only way you're gonna find them is if you actually go out and try even if you don't always succeed sometimes you still gotta try 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 again that's the only way you're gonna do it can't expect success every single time. The last snake for you guys, since we didn't find a snake out there, you know that king snake shed was pretty sweet. Um, this is Oedipus, coral glow pied, 100% het clown. So we're looking to make some coral glow clown pieds next season. Should be sweet. That's actually a project I've been working on since I first started bringing ball pythons. I hope you guys are having a great day. I can't wait for my family to come back so we can do some more family vlogs and uh, yeah, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other. See you next time. That's what I have to do to sync up the audio with the camera so that it picks up easily and all these nice different B-roll shots are able to happen. And I don't have to work too hard to sync all the audio together with the video, which would be a real pain in my ass. Here's our beautiful Boral 
Here's our beautiful boy, Bull. <laughs> Good God. Here's our beautiful boy, Bullwinkle, here that we produced. Oh, Jesus, Cusco.